So today we're testing out the brand new GTO silo from EO Van Board. I've been testing the silo for about 10 days now and I've got some pretty interesting feedback. But before we get started, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott Davies. I like to make weekly content, whether it be EUC, e-skate, and even from time to time, e-scooter. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any uploads. Scotty. Scotty. But that's enough of an intro. Let's jump straight into the video. So the GTO silo comes in gear drive and belt drive. It also comes in an option for double kingpin or traditional kingpin. So this is a first for Eovan to offer both of those options, gear drive and traditional kingpin. Today we're looking at the double kingpin gear drive and it comes in at about 1,850 US dollars after my subscriber discount. So let's jump straight into the video and start at the top of the deck. What has changed? What hasn't? Well, for starters, and I did not notice this either, in the photos and online images and videos I saw, it is much wider than the two previous decks. But it also has a lot more concave for your toe and heel. It's a very, very comfortable board to ride on, cruise on, and now, even carve on. The previous two models really did lack a bit of concave and for those bigger feet a bit of width as well. Another thing I'm really happy about they have stuck with their red carbon fiber weave. This just adds a really beautiful different look to the board. I haven't seen another red carbon fiber wood out there and I really think Eovan now owns that look. It's just different. Let's move inside the deck, the heart and the brains of the board. And again, this has been completely revamped from their old models. It's now got a fantastic battery. It's a 12S 5P Molly Cell P42. It used to be a good size, but not a very good cell. It had Panasonic cells, which suffered terrible sag from about 40%. This new one coming at 21 amp hours is the real deal. And I can tell you, it fills up every millimeter of that enclosure. I don't know, but I would almost guess they made the enclosure to fit the battery. This thing is tight. Now moving to the rear of the board and the ESC. Now, Eovan is famous for using a VESC. I think they were one of, maybe one of, it was around Eovan, Sika, two of those Chinese brands to come out with a Chinese board with a VESC based speed controller and it was good it wasn't great it was good they had a few problems they used to see a lot of blown moss mosfets and unfortunately occasionally they weren't programmed very well so they've moved to a hobbywing ESC now on their webpage you can check it out they talk about how it's been upgraded and customized and all that sort of drama I don't feel too much customization and I'll talk about that very very soon I don't feel extreme power and that's one of the points I really need to hammer home this is not more powerful than the GTS Super it's just not I think and again this is not on the web page anywhere my feeling is running around about 50 amps maybe 60 so what that means is is Compared to a lot of the other race-built boards out there these days, the ones that are designed to make you go, holy crap, when you take off, it doesn't quite have that feeling. Now, is this a deal breaker? No, I don't think so. Unless you're buying this board exclusively to race. If you want to race this board, you could still definitely buy this and replace the ESC. There's many options you could put in there that would work really, really well. If you want a day-to-day -day board, something to ride, carve crews have really good top speed well over 50 kilometers per hour have really nice acceleration really smooth acceleration really good brakes very predictable and reliable then this is perfect i wouldn't change a thing
let me show you an acceleration test in speed mode 4 on practically a full battery, maybe 95% battery. Now, it's good, but it's not breakneck. If you compare it to the GTS Super, I really struggled to launch the GTS Super, whereas this one, um, yeah, not a problem at all. So here we go in acceleration in three, two, one. It's full acceleration, I'm not letting off. Woo! So there you go, that's the acceleration. So it's, oh, it's, it's really hard and I don't wanna knock it because it's good, you know? Six months ago, I'd be, this is awesome, I have no, no concerns, it's fantastic, it's beautifully built, but we know there are better options out there now. Um, other options that have, are new to the market, that are using Hobbywing ESCs that have more power. So I really, I don't know, my feedback would be, by the board, it's smooth, it's reliable, and it's got good power, it's not bad. But if you want to race it, buy it with the knowledge you will need to upgrade the ESC. All right, so while we're talking about the ESC, we have to acknowledge their new remote control. I call it the stereo slider because it looks like the old school uh, graphic equalizer knobs you'd have on your stereo back in, the, back in the 80s and early 90s. Now this will, as I said in my unbox video, this will polarize the community. Some will love it, some will hate it. The people who have tried it, really like it, including myself. I actually really like this remote control. It's a really natural motion to accelerate. The spring is strong and it can be used for left-handed or right-handed people because everything is central. You never, I've never hit any buttons accidentally and it's got a nice basic screen. A couple of points I don't like. It doesn't have auto on, so you have to turn the board on manually every time. The board will turn itself off after about 10 minutes, I think, it'll time out. And it's using a micro USB charge port. One big plus, it does have cruise control. Let's talk about these bad boys. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is their first board with a gearbox drivetrain, and it's really nice. It's got a nice sound to it. It performs well. It's not janky, if that's a word, jittery. Feels very smooth. If you didn't know it was a gearbox, you would almost think it was a belt drive. It's made really, really nicely. Um, I've pulled it apart, I've had a really quick inspection inside. The three gears are all made out of a magnesium alloy aluminium. I'll put the correct term here on the screen. It's three gears in a row. So you've got your motor gear, then you've got your spindle, and then you've got the gear uh, driving your wheels. And it's packed full of what looks to be really good quality grease. And it's got something none of the other gear drives so far I've opened has got. It's got a rubber gasket right the way around. Now driving those gear drives are I think the same motors as the Super. They're 3,500 watts, that's what they say on their website. But of course that number as I always say is irrelevant because it all comes down to your ESC. They're nice big motors, I think they're 6374s. If that's wrong I'll put it on the screen. I did struggle to find it on the website, but they look like 6374s and it goes really, really well. But there is an issue, and it's a really annoying one, and I'm gonna try and fix it when we stop for a coffee. The gear drive hits the deck. Let me show you. Now, when you attempt to do, not even a hard carve, this here hits here. So you watch, I'm gonna put some weight on the board. That's now hitting the deck. Same on this side. It's a bit worse on this side because I do turn this way a bit more. You can see the mark there where the gear drive is 
has chipped the carbon, unfortunately. And there it is there, hitting again. Now, this is not me carving super hard. This is not me with the bushing super loose. So, I'm hoping stiffer bushings will resolve it. But I've got a feeling when they designed the gear drive, they may have designed it around the previous deck, which was a fraction narrower in that tail part. Now, it doesn't affect when I'm riding, when we're riding like this, no issues. We're not hitting right now, I can feel it's not hitting, because when it hits, you feel it stop. You actually feel it go conk. As of right now, day to day, like this, no issues. It's when you want to do tight, slow, circles or turns i'll show you up here on the road actually if there's no cars coming so that's hitting right now i can feel it's hit its point of no more turn and it's not that small a circle it's probably about two meters now the faster you go the less likely it is to hit but i've got to call it out because i think it is an issue which probably needs to be resolved Right, the next thing we need to talk about are the bushings. I'll keep it really short and simple. They are very, very soft. Out of the box, even when tightened, very loosey-goosey. To the point where I will not do a top speed test on this until I either put the traditional kingpin trucks on or I get some harder, stiffer bushings. These are loose. I want to do a sound test on these motors so I've unplugged my wireless microphone we're gonna go off the built-in GoPro mic and I'm gonna put it down by the motors at a fairly strong acceleration there's a nice weedy bit up here where it should cut out a lot of side wind and you should be able to get a good indication of the sound these make Hopefully that worked. So I want to try to address the motors hitting the rear of the board. I'm going to do that by putting in some harder bushings. Uh, 99A and 96A. Now again, these are mystery. I don't know what durometer these ones are, but these have to be harder. So I'm going to install these and we'll see if they make a difference. I think it'll also make it a little less um, squirrely and will make it a bit more confident at higher speeds. Ninety nine board side, ninety six road side. One good thing, the T tool goes straight onto the lower nut without having to use a different tool. So many times this doesn't fit. This one, it does. All right, so what I've done is I've left the original orange bushing in the bottom with that Eovan spacer thingy, and I've put a 99A bushing on the roadside lower set. This one's completely changed. Let's see if it makes any difference. I think I've adjusted them to about the right point for my ride weight and style. Let's see. Okay, the carve already feels more controlled. It does require a little bit more effort, but that's okay. For me, it's gonna be the speed. So that's 40, that's 40K an hour, and there's no wobble in that back foot now. It's a lot more stable. So that's made a huge difference to the rear of that board. That's 43, 44, before, when I got to 40, I had a really scary wobble. And that's a huge difference. I'm now confident to carve 
at 43, 44K an hour. That's much better. If you're getting one of these boards, spend 10 bucks, replace the rear bushings. I'll also give this feedback to Eovan and suggest they do it in the factory. And lastly, let's talk about the wheel options on the GTO silo. You've got two options. You can go for what I've got on this board, which are what they call the AT-155s, or you can go for the RS-125s, which is their solid rubber option. Which one do I prefer? These ones, the AT-155s. The CNC milled hub and these tires are a really nice combination they wear extremely well. This is my third EO van with this particular type of tire and I have never worn one out. And I like to carve a lot. Now they're ugly, but they grip beautifully. They handle well and they wear well. Let's summarize really quickly in 60 seconds. The good and the needs improvement. The deck and the battery, the wheels, really, really good. Beautiful battery, huge improvement on the deck. Wider, way more concave. The gear drive themselves perform really well. Nice and smooth, not too noisy. Just a pleasure to ride. Not annoying anyone around you, just does what it needs to do. Now let's move on to the needs improvement. Well, obviously the ESC. I think it needs a bit more punch in top speed mode. It's good, as I said, I'd have no problem riding this on a daily basis, commuting, group rides. But if you want that off the line scare factor, it needs more amps. The next one is the positioning or the angle or however they're gonna fix it for those gear drives hitting the rear of the deck. And I think it can be solved with some risers. It's already better with the harder bushings. It does still hit though if you push it a little bit harder but I think that needs to be addressed. But that really is it. All in all, it's a very well-made, nice performance board, which I am happy to recommend. At the price point, it's good value for money, not great value for money, but again, you're getting a big board with a big battery. But with the wrap up done, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button hit the like button, it makes a big difference, not just to me, but to the algorithm of YouTube. It tells the YouTube gods that they should probably share this out to a wider audience. And that's it. So, skate safe, wear a helmet, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, Scott. He recommended it.